TT meets TT, episode 4, Carl Chris's Red Mark 2. Hi all, Andy here and welcome to episode 4 of TT meets TT. Episode 4 already, how did that happen? Make sure you go back after this episode to catch any previous episodes you may have missed. Today I'm featuring fellow YouTuber and Mark 1 and Mark 2 Audi TT owner Carl Chris. I'm sure a lot of you watching today are already subscribers to Chris's excellent content on his lovely red Mark II and his soon to be back on the road Mark I. In fact, today I'm wearing my red Andy Charger TT t-shirt in honour of Chris's great car. So last weekend, both Chris and Sarah Jane popped in for a catch up and I was able to talk to him about his original channel car and the work he's undertaken. If you are not already a subscriber to Car Chris, then I would recommend checking out the link above where you will find a whole host of Audi TT content on the Mark II and now some new content on the Mark I. You may recognize Chris from our first video together back in December where Chris kindly checked the timing chains on my 3.2 V6. A link to that video is right above. I would be really interested in your feedback and thoughts on today's video, so please do leave me a comment below. Anyway, let's get on with the footage from last weekend. Welcome back to another video. It it is. Is time. <laughs> so I'm here today with Car Chris of Car Chris's channel Fame. He's also a fellow YouTuber, and you can check out his content on his channel using the link above. So we're going to take a look around Chris's great Mark II and compare it to my Mark I today. I'm not going to go too far into that content because I know Chris has got one of those videos coming up. So let's get on with the video and take a look. Right. Fast back, isn't you? I know, yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> so Chris, we're here with your wonderful Mark II. It's in fabulous condition. Can you tell us a little bit about how you became the owner of this great car? Right, so Andy. Obviously, yeah, Mark II. I was looking for another car, like something a bit of fun, like weekend toys, sort of thing like that. I had a Mark I probably about 10 years ago. And then, obviously, haven't had one for a little while, so I thought, you know, so I might get a Mark II. So I went and looked for a Mark II. I looked at V6 ones and stuff like that. And the ones that I looked at looked a bit ropey. And I managed to get this one off a lady who literally has some, some medical reasons, could not drive it anymore. So I bought it first, so it had like full service history, stuff like that, all very much looked after. And I wasn't looking for red, but when I actually saw it in the flesh, I was like, do you know something, I have to have it. And obviously since having it, I've spent on it, I've got it to the standard it is now, where I haven't had any problems with it for ages now. Um, I've had obviously the normal maintenance stuff, the cam belts, um, cam follower, even the chain on the other side for two cam shafts. I've had the inlet valves wall blasted, walnut blasted, that's what I meant. Um, because the direct injection, you don't get any fuel that goes over through the manifold that goes over the back of the valves, it goes straight into the cylinder. So I've had like all the maintenance stuff on it, but everything works how it should. And as you can see, it's got a few um, cosmetic bits as well. Um, so I've done the front grill. I've got a video on that on my channel. Of how to fit that. So it's like an RS style front grille where you have to do quite a lot of modifications cut the bar out behind and stuff and I painted the uh, panel here so you don't so it's black so you don't see it um fog surrounds done gloss black Maxton design front splitter now I've actually noticed on your channel you actually cover how to fit that splitter and the side skirt. Yes. I guess that's also a modification you've added. Yep, so the Maxon Sky side skirts as well. I think it just flows the lines of the splitter. It's great. And the wheels? Yep, so 19 inch bowler wheels. Um, I wanted to obviously, I needed the gloss black ones to go with the theme of the car I was going for, obviously the red and gloss black. So I had to go for some new wheels and I thought, do you know, so I might as well go 19s and I've got the ET correct on them, so I don't have to have any wheel spaces on them. So that is how they sit on the arches, is how they got made. So when you got the car, I guess it was pretty factory when you picked it, it up. It was completely standard. Okay, so the wheel size on a standard Mark II, is that the same as the Mark I? Is it an 18 inch wheel? This did come with an 18. I think they've done the same thing at the Mark I, which you get a 17, I think the Mark I's did a 16, 17 and 18. With yep. the Mark II, I think it was 17, 18 and 19. If you want to put 19 inch wheels on a Mark 1, you definitely need spacers. 
don't think there's any way you're going to get those 19s on there without spaces, I don't think. So what you do, yeah. with these, I changed the ET. So I had these specially made, so right, I had so the ET I... changed. So okay. the ET is the distance between there and how far the wheel sticks out. Yep. So I went to a company called, I think they're called Auto Style. And he suggested, I said to him, the wheels are going to be eight and a half J. And then he goes through all his computers and stuff and he works out exactly how far I can come out without any rubbing. And first of all, I was like, oh, I don't know, it might rub, it might not. In the end, I said, yeah, obviously he's the expert. So I went with what he said. And to be fair, I'm so happy that I went with his suggestion. Because as you can see, it does it quite nice. Yeah, I mean, that, down the side. Yeah, now. I mean, that really does show, you know, you haven't got that wheel hanging out the side of the yeah. arch and it yeah it looks great i think it makes the car look a little bit lower as well with it that little bit further out but yeah as you said without sticking too far out yeah i had the uh rear diffuser painted gloss black black as well it's a bit gray at the moment so it's dirty again um this is a little gem this is a genuine audi part okay this is an, not obviously not the rs wing yeah. This is an Audi Sport Wing, which I actually brought from Audi. Got a video on that, which has got the part number and how to actually assemble this and put it on the car as well. So it actually does come in two parts. You have to obviously stick them and bolt them together. Painted the fuel cap gloss black as well. I see that. Obviously, just I've done that myself. It hasn't come out too bad, to be fair. Looks great. So it obviously just all blends in, all the same. Had the windows tinted because it didn't have them done before. car chris must check him out on instagram and then under the bonnet <laughs> so inside have you made any modifications to the inside or is it completely standard um, inside inside is complete oh only led lights i've changed like the lights to leds there are a few videos out there on changing leds inside and outside but obviously if you change the leds on the outside of the car for the headlights it is an mot failure from what i understand as well yeah absolutely so under here as you can see straight away the induction kit so before with this is the bwa engine and it comes with the air filter built into like the engine cover um so obviously i had that removed i've done it myself video on that as well i'll fit in this um so i've got all the whole induction kit all in gives that nice sort of like induction sort of sound audi r8 coils that's about it really under here obviously it's got a stage one remap as well which took it from 200 horsepower to around 250. It added like an extra 120 pound of torque. So it's like 320 something pound of torque now from like 200 or something like that. But yeah, these are very torquey engines. The car's never really finished. There's always be something I'm gonna want to do to this. But you class this as your daily driver, yeah? It's set up as your daily driver. No, <laughs> I use an X5. <laughs> I do about 3,000 miles a year in this. Okay. Obviously, when the weather's nice, I like to take it out. I appreciate it more if I'm not using it every yeah. day. Would you say, though, the way you've got it set up, you could use it as your daily driver? <laughs> I could, but I'd be scared because it's one of those cars. When you start modifying the car, right? I know many people might agree with this. You basically modify a car to make it unusable, and then you buy another car, and you do the same thing again. So it is still sort of usable, but obviously with the height of the spheres and stuff, you've got to think about every road you're going down, yeah. of every speed bump, and I have ripped off the front split a few times. And this is actually my second one on the car because of that. So I don't use it for work anymore. Yeah. I just use the X5. You could use it every day. It does work. Everything does work. Um, it's got quite harsh suspension on it. Okay, so you, have you changed the shocks yourself? No, I, I got someone else to do that for okay. me. He was doing a load of other work. I was just like, might okay. as well do that as well. Um, so it's got um, Bill Stein's um, B12 kit, which consists of B8 shocks and IBAC um, springs. I would, it's not crashy, it's, you, you know it's been changed. Yeah. Um, but obviously a nice road, you appreciate it. A shabby road, you wish you didn't do it. Is an actual cracking car. I mean, I've not seen many Mark IIs, and I know that you are the uh, 
Well, you are my guru when it comes to the Mark 1 so far, because obviously you helped me out massively when we did the, the timing change recently. So obviously we've got a video yeah. on the timing change, which you helped me out with. You took it to see someone, didn't you, for about timing change? Right. This has a cam belt. Right. So this has a cam belt on this side, yeah. which I've had changed. Um, but when it went for its remap, yeah. um, or it's Artec, there's actually a chain this side, which connects the camshafts together. Okay. And the tensioner in that was starting to fail. So I was getting a rattle on startup. Um, but I didn't know what it was until I went for the remap. And then Nikki there said to me, look, get that done ASAP. So I had all that all changed. So that, that's, that's all new now. So it's basically fit and forget. I even put a new high pressure fuel pump on it as well. Cause I had a lot of fueling issues with this car, which has sorted all that out. So now everything, it just runs absolutely perfect. Well, I reckon we should uh, get these cars back on the road and let's see what they look like to drive. Yep, Cracking. After reviewing Chris's car and getting the lowdown on his mods, we took my 3.2 back to the house and dropped it off so I could take a spin behind the wheel myself. While everything is in the same place as the Mark 1, the driving yeah. position does feel much higher on the road. The car was effortless to drive and you really could feel that power when you planted your right foot. It feels rock solid and the road handling is superb, although I do think the Mark 1 definitely has a more raw feel to it. Next, we picked up the real driving forces behind our channels for their opinions. I feel the harshness of the suspension. Yeah. It feels nice though, do you know, this, this, is, um, this is obviously my first experience of a Mark II. Complete, completely novice to the Mark II. So from my perspective, this is a good eye at me. So as you were an owner of both a Mark 1 and a Mark 2, which do you actually prefer? Hardcore, but which do well, you prefer? I don't know, I think it's probably like your children, you can't choose between them. You, know, you like both for different sort of things. Yeah. Obviously this one's more refined. Yeah. The Mark 1 I haven't got out on the road yet, so I'm still to see how much of a headache that's going to be yet. But I do love the Mark 2, um, but I suppose the Mark 1, it's just going to be a little bit more hardcore. Yeah. Obviously I'm, going, I'm chasing more power in the Mark 1 as well. So would you say that the, the Mark 1's got its plus points and the Mark 2's got its plus points then from what you're saying there? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, the Mark 2's, I've said, more, more refined, um, but the Mark 1's more retro. You hear everything, we smell everything a bit more because it's an older car now. Yeah. Um, and the technology's a lot different. So you said you had a Mark 1 many years ago. Yeah. So tell us about that. So I had a silver Mark 1, yeah, about 10 years ago. I've done coilovers on it, stage one, remapped it, induction kit. Um, and yeah, it was a good reliable car. And to be fair, when I got it, it actually had a brand new engine in it, which only had about 600 miles on it, which I had to run in. So I didn't have any engine problems with it as well, which is good. Uh, but obviously I regret selling that car, hence why I went back to the Audi TTs later on in life. Yeah. And I think I will always have them. I definitely would not be getting rid of the Mark 1 or the Mark 2. So that was a 225 as well? That was it? a 225, yeah. Okay, quad, well, see, it would be a quad, so it was any kind of quad, quad so. When you hit the turbo. Right yeah, you can. You can definitely hear that wine up there. A lot of that will be your induction kit. That is the induction kit, yeah. yeah. So it hasn't got like a dumb valve in it. That is literally just the induction yeah. sound coming back through it. It's surprising the difference that that makes. And I think a lot of people are unaware of that, that when they buy an induction kit, it's the sound you get inside of it. Almost like that sucking noise that the car makes. Exactly. We had a, a, an RS Turbo many years ago, and I thought, I'm gonna buy one of those cone filters for the RS Turbo. Yeah. And I put it on, and me personally, it was so loud. It, it sounded like every time I was accelerating, someone was going <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm not sure about that, that's how it sounded like. No, it was definitely. such a terrible noise, and it, to the point that I took it off in the end, oh, it offended me so much, yeah. I think that was mainly because that car was very old as well, right. so it was, um, let's say it was past its best, <laughs> a bit like me. What's the ride like in the back passengers? I was actually just thinking to myself that you can feel it a lot more than in the front. Okay. So, Definitely. what about the leg room? It's cosy. Cosy? Nothing. <laughs> okay. You get to know someone very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. the rubbing out. It's as low, isn't it? All oh, right. I thought it was someone tapping to come yeah. in then, for with the uh, passenger. That's never been four up. 
that's because it's all lowered. So we've obviously got the seats, well, not so much you, but I've got the seat right forward, so my knees are rubbing the dash. <laughs> so Sarah Jane, have you got any leg room at all in the back? Yes, I have. Oh, you have? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you could technically put people in, because you see people that have got this real romantic idea about going to chuck my skis in the car and drive to no, the exactly. Alps in my TT. Absolutely no way you could do it. No. And I've, I think you need to buy a roof rack. No, definitely. You can get a roof rack for them as well, can't you? Yeah, no, you the can, yeah. for it, so. so I think next time we head to Chamonix, if we take the TT, we'll definitely be taking a roof rack. And you also, your DSG, so you've had no problem to yours at all. No, just keep it serviced. Yep. Just do what you've got to do with it and you'll be absolutely fine. So obviously I've had the oil done in mine now, and um, I'd say I'm, I'm still not overly convinced that the behaviour it's got is quite right. It's, it's very... It's very keen, isn't it? You put it in reverse, that car. It does want to go like backwards before you. Yeah, it's literally quite snatchy, isn't it? I think we found this is, it. This is like that. Is it, it, even this is snatchy. Okay, so maybe yeah. it is an inherent behaviour of the car then. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, um, when I've had it, when I had the uh, fluid and filter change on it before, I did have a guy with a mark on it, but it gets absolutely no codes from the box, so there's no electrical fault. So all I can put it down to maybe the flywheels are uh, having a wonderful time, um, but it's still something. I mean, how often do you go backwards? Yeah, well, yeah. It doesn't do it at all going forwards. No, it's, that's the thing. Well, yeah, I didn't notice it doing it at the start of that car, I have to say, but I've noticed it's very, it's very eager when you first engage drive that it does want to go now so yeah it may be the clutches of it you know it might be the fact that clutch is dragging a bit and it's um it's quite happy just to go a lot of people go oh if, if it starts doing that judge like kangaroo and stuff mm -hmm. oh it's the metronics unit and all that stuff but then if you're getting no codes up then it's surely it's not it's a grand designs house just there oh was it yeah just thought chuck that into the, into oh, the mix yeah. It's a few grand designs houses on this road. Yeah, I think Kevin McLeod must have shares in this road, I think. <laughs> Would we have to pay at Bedgebury to um, get in the car park? Yes. Toss bags. Yes, okay, yeah. we won't go there then. Go back down the hill we just came up. Good fun on the bike, this hill. Is it? No, oh. absolutely not. <laughs> you have to have a go in this handy. It's, um, it sounds nice. It does feel, even in the passenger seat, and I don't sit in the passenger seat of mine very often because I end up doing most of the driving. Even with the harder suspension, it feels a lot more, not you, that's the wrong word, but it feels a lot more, well, refined, it definitely feels more refined. It's not so raw. It feels a lot more executive, let's say. That's what it feels like. Well, I'll do it. We drop the girls off. I'll take yeah. her out now. No, yes. they are. A little bit of sport. A little bit of sport. A little bit of sport. That trash straight. Yeah, you can feel that's kind of like, Oh, it is quick, isn't it? It is quick. I thought mine was quick when I pulled away from Marden earlier. Yeah, you think that's four up as well? Yeah. <laughs> They're only small though. Your um, shift was quite instant. Yes. Yeah, they're quite good actually. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I've got them actually in the Mondeo of all things. Okay. Well, yeah, it's like it's still since the ST version the Mondeo, um, but it's a bit like it's an estate car. It doesn't yeah. really. It's not a Formula One car. So do you remember when I came and we uh, looked over mine, looked at the timing chains, yeah. and then we were chucking that, that engine light was coming on. You saw it. So well, worked out what it is. Cool. Yeah. So it's the lambda sensor it on the front. So yes, yeah, there. There's two banks obviously, and one yeah. of the banks has got a. a so do you remember we had that really high reading as well, don't we, on that test? So, um, yeah, but apparently one's really easy to change and one's not so easy to change. And I don't know which one it is, so I'm going to have to disconnect one, yeah. see if the code's still being thrown, and then a bit of process of elimination work out it is. But I'm going to do it myself, because any case I'm unbolting it and bolting yeah, that one in. Have you got an OB11 now? I, well, I already had the, uh, oh, excuse you, yeah. we already had uh, one of the older style OBD11 sort of plug-in devices, it's the 12 quid one, but I haven't got the software yet, so the software I use is called, I want to call it Car Planner or Car something or other, and uh, that's what I did for the Kia, so the, right. video, the videos I've done on the Kia, so please uh, give them some love, because there's not many of them that are being loved, um, obviously check those out, and that also was uh, pinpointed the problems I got with the Kia, so that software does work. It has been doing what you needed. Yeah, and it, and it pinpointed the problem with that lambda sensor, so we know it's... Um, so you had quite a lot of positive feedback on the change, really. Everyone was saying, like, it's fine, isn't it? So yeah. It's like, was it minus we three? Yeah, we were concerned with it because it, it was coming up that it seemed to be quite near the tolerances, didn't it, on that one mm. that one stretch. But um, I 
don't think it is. I mean, we, we noticed in me earlier on in the car that there was a, a little bit of sound on the bonnet, so we'll have yeah. a look at that when we get back, yeah. see what that could be. But yeah, but yeah I'm most impressed with the, with your Mark II. So, for my first outing in a Mark II, um, have you had a Mark III? Had, had a go in a Mark III? No, I haven't yet. No? No, no, not yet. Do you think that's starting to lose a little bit of the uh, the TT feel though, on Mark III? Um, looks quite different, I think. It does look quite different. It is very, very sort of modern. I think the Mark II does get away with it. Uh, but to be honest with you, I probably will get a Mark III at some stage um, and just have the whole all three of them now to complete the collection. You've uh, got to complete the collection. I've got yeah. to complete the, I've, I've got yeah. I'm too far to away there. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking about maybe collecting all the versions of the Mark I. Yeah, that'd be So I might cool. have a Quattro Sport oh, at some point. Yeah, no, definitely. You can't well, get wrong with I'll have to. Stuff. I mean, I might need a few more subscribers to afford a Mark I Quattro Sport, <laughs> but we'll see what happens. I'm not sure I want the 150, although, um, you know, it's, I think that'll be interesting. It's, if you're going to have the whole collection, you've got to go 150, 180, 225, yeah. 247, and a Quattro Sport at 240. Yeah, no, that's true. Pretty sure that's all the right brake horsepower in a row there. <laughs> Sounds about right. I think they've done actually yeah. done a yeah. they've done a 190 as well, haven't they? Yeah. We are here, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say we, we might have a bit of a quick stop here, but yeah, we are. And we're back. Well Chris, thank you very much for your outing in your Mark II. And uh, thanks for coming down today and seeing us at the channel. And I look forward to watching your channel, which I will leave a link to above in the very near future. So please do check Carl Chris out. Great guy, great time as always. Thank you very much, mate. Oh, that's all mate. Cheers, stay tuned. Chris. Thanks for coming along and chatting all things TT. I had a great time and I hope you did too. Your car is cracking and driving it was a pleasure and an honor. The power delivery was amazingly smooth. We definitely have an awful lot of similar interests in our lives and I can see us making many more videos together in the near future. If you like what you've seen today, then please do give this video a thumbs up. It really helps me deliver more content that you would like. Also think about subscribing to my channel if you've not already done so. Here you will find a large selection of videos on Audi TT maintenance, how to and tutorials, and jobs you can do at home to keep these great cars on the road. Would you too like to appear in an episode of TT Meets TT? Then if so, please get in touch with me via this email address on screen now. Episode 5 is already in the works and all I can say is it is truly international. So make sure you hit the notification bell so you're alerted to its release. As always, thanks for watching and take care. See you soon.